Well, Jim, you tell me this is the jewel in the crown, mate. Give us a look. It certainly is. Here we go. Superb. This is a HQ factory 350 Statesman. It's got power steering, air conditioning, electric windows, velour trim. I purchased off a friend, Joe, from Adelaide. He had the intentions of restoring it and it didn't get around to doing it. And I got onto him and um, said that I would take care of it and uh, purchased it off Joe and got it back. It was a fair bit of intensive work on this one, the engine bay. We had to actually rebuild the engine on this one. It's turbo 400. It's got aftermarket air conditioning fitted to it. The car was purchased brand new without air conditioning. It went back to the same dealer four years later and they had the air conditioning fitted by the same dealer. I have all the books for this car, the order sheets, the whole lot. So all the service manuals, the books that come with the car, everything's all intact, which was in the glove box when I purchased the car. So it was well worthy of restoring it. This car is actually a 350 Statesman, which is pretty rare. The 350 Coupes are rare, and it's a 350 Statesman. It's an absolute pleasure to drive. It's got plenty of power. It's nice and soft in the suspension, as a Statesman would have. And, it's, and the air conditioning works great, even though it's an old system. So what was the car like when you purchased it? Was it a really good base? Well, it was a really, really good, honest, original base of a car. The paint was pretty ordinary. It had crow's feet through the car, through the top half of the car and the bonnets. The actual roof hasn't been touched. It's the original vinyl roof. So that hasn't been replaced. The roof's not been replaced. It had a bottom half paint job. Uh, we also restored it underneath. We painted all the floor pans and everything. There was no rust in the floor pans or anything like that. It had a little couple of spots in the doors, but nothing extensive. The front firewall was good. So it wasn't a real major resto. But, but Drew, as I say before, he's helped me do this car as well with all the cars. And he's, he's an absolute champion bloke. He's helped me right through the whole resto process of all the cars. And Drew, you're a top bloke. Two people are better than one, mate. Absolutely. <laughs> it makes the job much easier. So effectively, it was a perfect starting point for a restoration yes, with minimal was. rust. It was. Yeah. It, the, all the mouldings are original on the car. We buff polished them ourselves, all the wheel arch moulds and the moulds around the doors and so forth. So everything was put back to the car. When this car was restored, we used 98% of the parts back on the car. So we didn't replace bolts with new ones. We, we buffed them anodise them and then refit them to keep it the original look as much as we could. Mostly genuine parts in the rest side, that's great isn't it? <clears throat> well the hubcaps for example, they are new old stock hubcaps which I managed to purchase that were in actual GM bags with the wheel trims, the new old stock wheel trims as well. Wow. Uh, the original ones were a little bit rusty, the car was sitting around. How did you find those? Well just keep looking looking. <laughs> it's amazing what's out there isn't there it? Is, there's a lot in of cupboards or sheds, yeah. There's a lot of things in sheds. The grills that are in this car, they're New old stock as well, and we purchased them in the genuine GM boxes, which made the resto a little bit better. Fantastic. So you've basically stripped the whole car right down to nothing, and it's virtually been restored into concourse factory brand new condition. Correct. All the steering, everything's been replaced, everything's been painted individually and then reassembled. Wow. Well, Jim, you did say to me today that I was allowed to pick one car to drive to do a little bit of a test and review on for this collection. Would you mind if I chose this baby? Not a problem in the world. Fantastic. That'd be great. Let's do it. Now we're talking. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm driving a genuine factory 350 small block Chevy Statesman. You might think, well, I've seen them before, but Tell me, have you seen a factory 350 Statesman? Yes, people have fitted 350 small blocks into these things before, but this is exactly how it rolled off the showroom floor at General Motors Hold. And that's what excites me. They just don't grow on trees. You know what? Sure, the good old Aussie 308 was a great engine, but nothing beats a 350. They've got cubic inches, and cubic inches produces torque. Torque that'll take on stuff like that late model, everyday cars with ease. Have a listen to this. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Love it! <laughs> you know what, I like my muscle cars, Aussie and American, but there's nothing like something different. That's what this car is. It's got a bit of luxury, it looks different. It's just a classy, smooth piece of machinery. Very, very unique, and you know what? I'd be happy to have this thing. I'd be happy to own it. Something different, and that's what it's all about. I'm gonna enjoy this 350. Torque wins races, they say. 
<laughs> what I like about this car is it brings back memories. Probably showing my age, but it's like stepping back in time to around 1971 or two. It's like being in your lounge room again. It's like being in a great big lounge chair, actually. You've got that old wood grain sort of feel through the dash, through the door trims. And the seat material looks like something you'd expect to see in your Nana's lounge suite back in the day. <laughs> She's certainly not built for performance or handling or racetrack use, but it's comfortable. And that's what I like about it. <laughs> 